Thank you, Convener. Um, my question is to um, Professor, uh, Professor Stefan. Uh, sort of rewinding slightly, you, you made reference to the 2003 um, offences, uh, Professor, and the fact that only 14% of the, the offences were actually um, aggravated by sectarian behaviours. Is, is, that, is that correct? The, the, am I no, 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 no. no. So, sorry, I, I communicated that wrongly. What I said was that only 14 per cent of the cases assessed and evaluated uh -huh, and right. were in relation to events at football matches or football outside related, them. Right. I was trying to refute the assertion because mm. so much of this process has been based on assertion rather than argument. Aka, statements with evidence. I was trying to refute the assertion was made by one of the police officers mm. um, that uh, this was overwhelmingly a public order problem or an issue related to football matches. The, some of the very few pieces of hard evidence we have over that snapshot of 2003, early 2004, refute that analysis. So, so in terms of the 86 per cent of other cases which were assessed, do you have any inf information about the circumstances? Um, mm. Right. I, can give you, I can give you some of the, um, the, ma the major um, conclusions. Um, most of them, 54 per cent, um, were in the Glasgow area, 22 per cent were in Lanarkshire, and a substantial minority were in West Lothian. I can consider the reasons why that should be if you're interested in it, because the reasons are historical. Um, alcohol was a feature in the majority of cases. Um, in 49 per cent of the cases, the police report revealed that the accused was under the influence at the time of the offence. There were twice as many Catholics as Protestant victims examined. One per cent of the cases showed Muslims as being the target. Fifteen per cent of cases arose in the context of marches. In other words, what, what, what that, and, and, you know, we need the big database of 2003 to 2011 to be confident. And, and that will appear in, in public domain in due course. But what it's really saying to us this far, that, snap is saying, that snapshot is saying to us that these incidents don't necessarily occur where you would think they would occur in the marching season and at football matches. They are part of the fabric of certain parts of Scotia, can, which can is a reflection of the fact that? that the I'm problem is societal. I'm coming to that, yeah. John. Um, just, I'd like to, uh, if you could provide us with the source uh, so that the clerks... Which is? Which is? Um, I can, I can read it out to you. Sorry, it, it, just one at a time. Sorry, right. Professor Devine. Investigation and reporting of sectarian, religiously aggravated crime, an analysis of the first six months, and it's, um, it's produced by the uh, Scottish Government. Okay. And the other um, matter you referred to was the current Lord Advocate's analysis. Yes. Which is a separate matter. The, 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 this, is, this is going to build on that snapshot, right. but importantly, it will, it will examine all the data between 2003 and the present. Now, uh, academics, scholars, historians, anthropologists, sociologists uh, have been wanting to see this information for some time. It won't necessarily tell the entire yes. truth, but it is hard quantitative information from which we, I think, can learn a lot. It would be very interesting to find out whether, when you speak to Frank Mulholland again, when this information is going to be released in the well, public. Well, again, preemptive strike. I mean, going through my head, you see, is we will also, when we're writing to the Lord Advocate for the guidelines, mm. ask when this is to be published. Yeah. It was supposed to be the if autumn. It's going to, is it to be published, or, was it to, or is it an internal matter? No, no, for... it's, uh, well, I think there will be a, something of a controversial response if it isn't published. Right, so we'll be asking if and when it will be published. And it's not only to be no. published, but it's to be analysed. Right, that's all on the record, so we know yeah. what we can write the Lord Advocate about before we... we the Lord Advocate's coming in a couple of weeks, isn't it? So, one week. One well, good luck with that. <laughs> This committee is fairly robust. Oh, no, no, I'm, 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 I wasn't. I was simply being facetious. So I, I hope so. I hope that. so. We gave you a scorn, you know. It's simply, scorns aren't given away willy-nilly in this committee. Um, can I say, you've still got another one, John, and then I've got Alison, then Hamza. Just a very quick one. John, um, Professor Devine, you made reference to a case which you had given um, expert evidence to in relation to Perth Sh Sheriff Court. Did that relate to football? No, it was an incident that took place in one of these in small towns, Scotland, or maybe is Perth a city? I don't know. It is, I think it is. Um, at two o'clock on, I think it was two days after Christmas last year, uh, one of the defendants was an off-duty policeman, and one of the accusers was also an off-duty policeman. So it was a very interesting case. It had nothing whatsoever to do with being present at a football match. It was um, 
it was, a it was un un unambiguously a breach of the peace, but the more interesting and, if you like, nice question was, was it sectarian aggravated? The assistant uh, or deputy law, um, uh, prosecutor, the, the deputy, um, the assistant prosecutor fiscal argued strongly that it was and so strongly indeed that the sheriff started to lose impatience with her because, you know, this, the case was the Irish Republican Army is a sectarian anti-Protestant organization. Therefore, singing about it is sectarian aggravated in terms of Section 74 of the 2000, 2003 legislation. Historically, that, that statement cannot be proven. That's not to say that that organization has killed Protestants. Of course it has but it's also killed Catholics, um, and it's a politically motivated terrorist organisation. Thank you. Yes, I'm just, I'm just checking with one of the members for Perth. It's not a city unit, is it? I've allowed you to say that. You're in part of the campaign. Uh, just to clarify, if the Perth people could be offended there. Uh, Alison followed by Hamza. And Thanks, convener. Professor Devine, would you think it would be folly to go ahead with this legislation without seeing that evidence that you're talking about, that, that, that analysis? Correct. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, let, let's create the theoretical hypothetical. And I'm not necessarily saying this will come out. But some of the um, analysis done by, I think, the Holy Roman Catholic Church has suggested that the 2003 data show that target Catholics are more likely to be targeted six times in the ratio of six times to non-Catholics. Um, now, uh, th they may not have produced this evidence on the basis of social scientific rigorous inquiry. I don't know how they came to that figure. But supposing for the sake of the hypothetical, you find that that figure is re replicated in the massive database from 2003 to the present, we have an issue. We have a, a, a huge issue in this society to, to deal with. And um, we, we, we may well have to consider whether uh, um, uh, Keith O'Brien, uh, the Cardinal Archbishop of Glasgow, were right when he asserted this is not a sectarian problem, it is blatant anti-Catholicism. We don't have the evidence he may have, but I don't have, to support that assertion. But we will know a lot more when the entrails of these data are considered and explored. Thank you.